for Saints. Welcome to another Bible study here at Friendship Mission Church for the Homeless and the Poor here in Montgomery, Alabama. Pastor and founder, Vince Rosada. My name is Minister Warren Rudd. I'm a licensed minister by my bishop, Jimmy A. Ellis III, out of Victory Christian Center, or Victory Christian Center of Philadelphia, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Tonight's service is going to be on brokenness. You know, God breaks us so that the fruit of the Spirit can grow in us. He has to clean out our heart. So until you resolve yourself to be broken, God can't use you. We've been talking about confession of sin. We've been talking about salvation. We've been talking about integrity. We've been talking about all these things that help us mature within the body of Christ. So tonight we're going to talk about brokenness. So before I can move on in the growth of the body, I need to talk about people who refuse to be broken. So let's see what God says about brokenness. So grab your Bibles, grab your paper, and grab your pen, and as I always say, there you go, right there. Mm -hmm. God bless you. bound in your arms and in your spirit and in your presence. Father, let the preacher come forth with a word that you made upon his heart and to your children, that they may be edified and established and built up in the things of God. I ask these things, that I may decrease and that you may increase in their hearts, mind, body, and spirit. I ask these things in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. All right, everybody go to the book of John. John chapter, John chapter 12. Brokenness. John 12. When we're talking about brokenness, over the weeks I've been talking about integrity. I've been talking about profession. I have been talking about behavior. But I started realizing in uh, prayer, uh, the Lord laid on my heart about people can't have integrity unless they've been broken. People can't do my will unless they've been broken. Amen. If people are so stuck, stuck on stupid, sitting on silly and waiting on dumb, they have not moved past their self. Because if you get high, if you fornicate, if you steal and lie, you're still stuck on stupid, sitting on silly, and waiting on dumb. So until you allow God to break you, you can't grow in the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Amen. I know, I, I experienced it. I've been stuck on stupid, sitting on silly for a long time and waiting on dumb. A lot of times because I had a bottle next to me and a vow of crack on the other side. Stuck on stupid, sitting on silly, waiting on dumb. Amen. Amen. So, the way up. And I hope some of you want to go up. Do you? Amen. Do you want to stay down where you are? Amen. Well, watch this. The way up is that. In the Bible, the way you get yeah. up in Jesus is you must first go down. So, looking at chapter 12 of John, look at verse 23 and 24. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, 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 verily means truly, truly. Truly, truly, I say unto you, except a quarter of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it brings forth what? Fruit. So what is Jesus saying? He's actually talking about himself. How many of you have planted this summer? Yeah. When you throw a seed into the ground, the root breaks through the seed, sprouts from the ground, and then you know you got what? Whatever plant you was planting. So Jesus said, I'm going to die. I'm that be the corn that he was talking about. I'm going to die, and when I rise again, guess what's going to break forth? Fruit, you, Christians. Hello? Because unless he died, we ain't saved. Amen. So he had to die to get up. Are you going to die to self in order that you may live? Because if you're not willing to die to self, you're going to die physically and die spiritually and die and go to hell. But you got to die to self. Amen? Amen? Go to Ephesians chapter 4. I got a lot of scriptures, so I'm not going to try to stick on a whole lot of stories. But whatever God decides to do, he does, right? Y'all know me. Plus, I done had a whole lot of coffee, so watch out. <laughs> Chapter 4, Ephesians 4, verses 8 and 10, 8 through 10. Wherefore, he said, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts unto men. Now, that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended? 
descended. Hello, you look at that. He descended first into the lower parts of the earth. And he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fulfill all things. So he went down to get up. Amen. What are you talking about when he descended? What did he do? He went into a paradise which some people call hell. Paradise doesn't exist no more. Purgatory doesn't exist no more. Jesus put it away. See, people fail to understand that that place was a holding pen. There's no such thing as a holding place no more. Either you die and go straight to hell, or you die and go straight to hell. So when he said he took the keys of the kingdom of hell, that's what he's talking about. Because at that point, he let loose the Old Testament saints. And even back then, they saw some of them walk in the street. Amen. So, if people tell you purgatory and it's a holy place, sorry. Sorry, you're just, you're either going to go straight to hell or you're going to go straight to heaven. I'm going straight to heaven. Amen. Amen. I'm going up because I refuse to walk in my own understanding. You must die. It's hard to die when you've been walking in certain truths all your life. It's hard to die when you've been raised in the hood under certain truths all your life because you don't want nobody to get over on you. It's hard to die and be humble. It's hard to walk in integrity. It's hard to stand up and tell the truth. Huh? It's hard to confess that you're a mess. Huh? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. But Jesus honors you when you get that truth because then you can help you. But if you refuse to tell that truth, you ain't not. The devil still got you bound in your pride. Because I don't want to feel ashamed. I don't want nobody to look, look low on me. Well, I'm sorry. They already are. Uh, Hello. There they are. Amen. When God gives you a direct instruction, he gives you the anointing or the power to go with it. But he doesn't give it to you unless you're going to be broken. He doesn't give it to you unless you're going to have integrity. He doesn't give it to you if you're going to stay in denial. But God will give you the anointing to fight any struggle, any circumstance, any ailment that is going on with you. You just got to have enough humbleness and enough dying to self to receive it. Amen. So let's look at some of this. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. To be honest, I had to die for the last couple weeks because I've been stuck on myself. Hello. Now, what are you talking about, boy? Because I wanted things to be a certain way in my home. I wanted things to be a certain way in my marriage. I wanted things to be a certain way in my family and what I do in the workplace, right? But then I had realized I can't change people. So you know when God said, despite them acting stupid or me, guess what I had to do? God broke me. Said, now, go bless them no matter what. What? Yeah, keep blessing them. And do you know there was such a transformation in my son, my wife, my co-workers? It was blowing my mind because I can't give them enough. I wasn't going to argue with you. I was going to keep on loving you through it. And as I begin to love them through it, I mean, the windows of heaven begin to just open up in my life. I got so many opportunities now that's blowing my mind. Now, here's the hard part. My flesh didn't want to do it. Amen? Because when you're broken, it's like a ripping. You're breaking ties. You're breaking situations, and it's like so hard. Ugh. It feels so painful to want to change. But if you do it, God blesses you. Amen. And then other people will be seeing it on your life. I'm serious. Try it. It hurts in the beginning. Because this, I ain't never did this before. They just trying to get over on me. Matter of fact, they running the game on me. Let them run it. Let them run it. <laughs> Amen. It's hard. Romans 8.28. What does it say? 8.28 and 30. And now, and we know that all things work together for the good to them that love who? God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Not yours. His purpose. For whom he did foreknew, and he already knew. He also did what? Predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brothers. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Boy, that's so powerful right there. Whom he did predestinate, then he also did what called. And whom he called, then he also justified. And whom he justified, then he also glorified. Amen. Amen. That's why Jesus said, unless I die, 
right in the corner of me, then I will be glorified. You don't get glorified until you want to die on yourself. You must be broken. And guess what's the hardest thing to do? Is tell somebody, no, you're not acting like that no more. I'm not going to do it no more. Now, everything in your mind and mind wants to keep doing it. But you made a decision out loud to the people who encourage you, to the people who enable you and just say, no, I'm not doing it no more. It's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. But watch the blessing come. When you make a conscious decision, and that the people who help you in your mess got to know you're serious. If they don't see that you're serious, that's what they're going to keep on doing. Keep on playing. That boom. Then when you make a mind, they just going to figure you're lying. He ain't serious. She ain't serious. I just offer them this and offer them that, and here they come. You got to learn no. Amen. Matter of fact, you even got to learn when you see them coming. Alright? And I'm going to give you the same thing that helped me through. 
I'm giving you the same thing that I watch successful men and women of God go through. But they have to get to a place of making a conscious decision that it's time for them to change. They can't lean on their left or their right to see if their brother or sister is doing to make a change in their life. Don't tell them, I, I, I want to be like you. No, learn from that individual and be you. God don't want you being like nobody else but who he created you to be. Now, there are people who will teach you and you grab what they taught you, but never come outside of who you are. We got too many folks pretending to be the same thing, wearing their pants down below their butt. You know, all that stuff. Everybody looking the same. And I tell you one thing, now, I don't know why I'm going here, but I tell you one thing, if you women would start telling these young bucks that it looks ugly, the way that pants behind that crack of that booty, guess what? They pull them up. Somebody told them it was cute. And it had to be a female. But when I was growing up, only faggots in jail wore it down. They said we have an opportunity. That's all they think. I'm available. <laughs> so, all you want to do is what you said. I'm available. <laughs> if you was in jail, you will be available. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
dairy construction. Amen. Amen. Psalms 89. Please don't yell at me talking about to be holler at you. But I can give you one to fight. You got to get the holler at you. Every time I hear somebody, can I holler at you a minute? I know they want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> How about, can you speak to me for a second? But not how. Let's look at what Psalms 89, verses 20 to 33 says. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. Mm. With whom my hand shall be established, my arm also shall strengthen him. Look at what God is going to do to a broken spirit. Amen. The enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor shall the son of the wicked afflict him. And I will beat down his foes before his face. See? Mm -hmm. And plague them that hate him. But my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. And in my name shall his horn be exalted. You know what his horn means? That's just an idiom for his authority. Amen. Amen. I will set his hand also in the sea and his right hand in the river. He shall cry unto me, Thou art my Father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. Amen. Also, I will make him my firstborn, higher than the kings of the earth. My mercy will I keep for him forevermore. And my covenant, see that's what we need to understand, the true covenant of God. My covenant shall, shall stand fast with them. Verse 29. His seed also will I make to endure forever, and his throne as the days of heaven. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my judgments, if they break my statutes and keep not my commandments, then will I visit their transgression with the rock and their iniquity with stripes. Nevertheless, my loving kindness will I not utterly take from him, nor suffer my faithfulness to what? Amen. Come on, people. Come on. Somebody got blessed by it. Amen. I hope. Somebody got blessed by it. Breaks us so that the fruit of the Spirit can grow in us. God can't push you to the next level until He cleans out your heart. God can't push you to the next level until He cleans out your heart. Why ain't you got a job yet? Because God can't push you to the next level until He cleans out your heart. Why ain't things working out for you? Because God can't push you nowhere until He cleans out your heart. Sound like you got a heart condition. Sound like you got a heart problem. You know, you're either not praying to God, you may read the Bible all the time. But the Spirit of God ain't with you. Because you know your heart is wrong. God looks at heart condition. You know, you may impress others with your jargon, but God knows your heart. I don't know your heart. Amen? I'm only worried about my salvation because, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and trouble. But you know you. You know what needs to be changed. You know the area that needs to be broken. But have you questioned yourself? Lord, what am I doing wrong? What sin am I committing that is stopping my growth? What sin am I doing that I need to stop? Lord, ask him. But I guarantee you, you won't ask because you already know. You already know. You already know. It's either you're getting high, you're fornicating, you're doing something wrong. You're still lying, you're manipulating. Amen. Amen. I know it's a little hard, but you you got to hear the truth to get broken, people. It's right here in the Word. God is not going to bless sin. Amen. Amen. But He will bless somebody who gets serious enough to say, "Help me stop. Yes. Show me, Lord. I know I'm a mess. Help me get out of it." And He sees your heart that you want to change. He knows there's a flesh problem, and He also knows there's a heart problem too. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Let's look at some verses on that. Psalms 24. Psalms 24, looking at verse 4 and 5. And it says, He that has clean hands and a what? Pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. Clean hands and a pure heart. He won't despise. Amen? Amen. Amen. Psalms 34. Psalms 
Looking at verses 18 and 19. 